We've now used the Euler-Cromer method to examine several motion problems. A good question to consider is, how accurate are the results that this method produces? In physics, motion is governed by two main principles, the momentum principle and the energy principle. We've already used the momentum principle to set up the Euler-Cromer method, so we can use the energy principle to check our results. The energy principle says that as a system changes position and velocity, the total amount of energy should remain constant. In the case of a spring, for example, that means that at any point in time, the ball's kinetic energy plus the spring's potential energy should give you the same number. We calculate the ball's kinetic energy from its momentum as the square of the momentum magnitude divided by two times the mass. We calculate the spring's potential energy as one half of the spring stiffness times the distance from equilibrium squared. This code is a modified version of our spring force code. In lines 25 and 26, we've added calculations of the kinetic energy Ke and the potential energy Pe. In line 27, instead of graphing the ball's position, we're now graphing the total energy. If our simulation is accurate, this graph should give us a flat line. If we run the code, we see that we get a pretty constant value for the total energy. It oscillates a little bit, so it would be nice to improve this. As in the last video, we can increase the accuracy of our code by decreasing the time step. If we lower the step size by a factor of 10 and run the code again, we get a much flatter line for the total energy. If the graph of total energy had not become flatter, we would know that there was something wrong in our simulation. But since the total energy remains constant, we can have confidence in our results. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this check only works for forces for which you can calculate a potential energy. We call these forces conservative forces, and you'll learn more about this type of force in your physics course. By the way, before Cromer came along, the original Euler method failed to keep energy constant because in the original version, you updated the position before the momentum. Swapping these two lines in the code causes the energy to increase uncontrollably no matter how small you make the step size. So that's why it's important to specify that we use the Euler-Cromer method and not the original Euler method. You should now be able to evaluate the accuracy of the Euler-Cromer method by checking the total energy. Follow the link in the description below to use this code to apply the Euler-Cromer method for the following forces, potential energies, and initial conditions, and check that the total energy is conserved. This concludes our series about the Euler-Cromer method for beginners. I hope it's been helpful and that you continue to learn about modeling physics with computers. If you'd like to see more applications of computational modeling in physics, check out the other videos available on this channel or click on the subscribe button below.